everybody. Welcome back to McCamey Farm and Outdoors. And we are in the garage today. Uh, it's raining outside, so not a whole lot we can do. But if you've been following along, we have started on our bundled wood inventory. And we've got some ash and some maple and oak um, split up into the bundle size wood and got that outside seasoning and and trying to get ready for uh, for camp season. But the next step in that is a bundler, uh, a machine. And uh, I've kind of looked at this and thought about it, you know, whether to go with bags or, or bundles. And I think for right now, I'm gonna go with bundles. You know, online, they're anywhere from seven, eight hundred dollars on up to two thousand dollars just depending on what kind you get so i am going to attempt to make one myself and i want to take you along on the on the process and maybe give you some some tips and pointers that i learned along the way and and maybe help you out in making the decision whether to fabricate one yourself or or buy one um, but first off what we're going to build it out of is this hammock frame. That's right, a hammock frame. That's a good, good tight joint right there. That's gonna be ready to weld. Okay, so I've got the main frame um, notched and everything cut out to length. So I'm gonna spin you around here and show you what we got working with here. So this is gonna be the base right here. It's basically three feet wide. And then that upper two pieces of pipe that will be the the uprights for the uh, the wrapping part to sit on. So now it's uh, it's all cleaned up and ground. So let's uh, let's do a little bit of welding. All right, the uh, main framework is done. Everything welded up, Got everything good and square, and we're ready to start working on the the top half and the, the bundling section of it. So I'm gonna run a piece of uh, two by four square tubing right across the top of that and then use the, uh, the square tubing that I had left over from the hammock and come out here and make my sides uh, for the front half of the bundler. So let's get to work on those.
All right, everybody, back down here in the shop. Got the fabrication finished up on the bundling machine. So just wanna kinda go through it with you all and uh, give you a little bit of rundown on some of the, the processes that are used, especially on the, the mechanism piece of it. I didn't really get a lot of that on film just because it was pretty tedious and time consuming. And I didn't wanna bore you with all the details, but here in the end, I just wanted to show you how it's, how it's constructed. Uh, but if from the front, very similar to what you'd see on any bundling machine. It's 12 by 12 area here. Uh, I made a few temporary marks here for 0.75 and one cubic feet bundles. Of course, y'all saw the framework that was made out of the old hammock frame. A uh, piece of box tubing I got from the scrap yard. Some other random little pieces and parts that come from the scrap yard. The only thing that I actually had processed was this piece of uh, four inch, quarter inch plate here. I had it sheared off because I wanted this to be good and true and straight. So I had a local, local rod iron store shear that off there and I drilled the holes in it and everything. But got a one inch shaft here. And here on the business end, I've got a flange bearing and then it's attached here to this 48 tooth sprocket. And then in between that, I've got a, a spacer that I've tack welded to this quarter inch plate. So it marries the, the two together, the plate and the sprocket. And then this flange bearing on the, the other side of the plate. And then the, the plate here on the, the wrapping end, I took this one inch piece of, I'm not, it's not all thread, it was, I think it was an old um, anchor bolt for some pier footings because it was threaded on one end and basically raw steel on the other. So I drilled a hole in the, the quarter inch plate, put that through it, welded the nut and the bolt through it. And then of course you all saw the, saw when I made the, the shrink wrap tube holder the spring and everything so that worked out really well i was that was going to be the thing i was worried most about was how to make this and i think this turned out really good and it, it works just like it should and then uh up front here got an old trailer jack handle that i have saved for years up at the barn just to have a, a crank handle for something and it worked out worked out perfect for this so I just welded it onto the, the end of this three quarter inch shaft with these pillow bearings. Number 35 roller chain and a 15 tooth sprocket. And it's working great. Everything's doing exactly like it's supposed to do. The only thing that I had that didn't go quite as I wanted it to, this piece of plate right here that I welded up, it, it twisted on me when I welded these pieces of angle onto it uh, may go back and redo that I don't know it, it works just how it is but it's a little bit a little bit wonky there where it twisted up and then I had a, a piece of lead back from the old race car days that I added here as a, a, a counterweight and as you can as you can see here it is very smooth and very balanced I mean, it will almost wrap, wrap a bundle itself. It turned out extremely well. Very happy with it. And like I said, I've wrapped a, a few bundles already just to try it out and make sure there weren't any kinks in it. And so far, so good. But we'll, uh, we'll put some wood in here and, and show you how it's gonna work. All right, and one thing that, of course, Always going to take a little bit of getting used to is, you know, getting the right, right pieces of wood in here. And, you know, you've heard a lot of people talk about that as far as the one thing with a bundling machine versus um, bags is trying to, trying to get everything lined up in here to where it makes a good, a good bundle. So that's definitely something that, you know, takes a little bit more time, of course. Um, Try to get the right pieces in there to where it's a, a good uniform bundle. 
Um, but for the most part, I've tried to cut uh, my pieces as flat as I can as far as when I'm splitting them. But, you know, it's not always possible. But for the most part, it works out good. So this one, I've got three, six, nine, 11 pieces there that I've got in that bundle. And that's, of course, a little bit more than uh, three quarters, but I'd rather it be a little bit much than a little bit short. Do one wrap. I like to do four wraps and the label on and then two to three over top of the label. Gotta get me a gotta get me a knife here to cut this off with, but in the short term we'll just do that, stretch it out. Yep, makes a, makes a good tight bundle. All right, I think that's gonna wrap this video up. I appreciate you sticking around to the end with me and I hope you enjoyed this build. Uh, I've, I've certainly enjoyed it. It's been, been fun to, to take something that was pretty much scrap or trash and put a few parts and pieces with it new and and, and create something that otherwise has to be has to be bought. Um, really enjoy that aspect of it, um, being able to fabricate things and and build things with my hands. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it. Uh, make some make some content for the channel. Make some bundles, and hopefully have some more videos of it all painted up and and putting out an order on bundles. But I will leave a link in the description to all the pieces and parts that I did purchase. I think uh, the majority of it came from, from Amazon. So I'll leave that link in the description, uh, links in the description. And if you have any questions, measurements, anything like that, um, ask away in the comments. I'll, I'll answer all I can and um, take measurements for you if you if you need them but um i appreciate you watching and i'll catch you on the next one